In part one, we demonstrated how to prepare your cabbage so that it turns into sauerkraut. Part two now, we are going to discuss how to can your homemade sauerkraut. You will need a number of things to get ready for this process. First of all, an adequate work area is required so that you have enough space for your jars uh, and once they have been canned so that they can cool. You will also require a canning pot or a canner, some jars and new lids. It is important that new lids are bought every time you do this process so that the seal will be proper. Also need tongs for lifting the hot jars out of the canner and it is important that once the sauerkraut has been processed that you listen for the lids to pop so that you know that you have a proper seal. First of all, you take the sauerkraut and your clean jars and make sure that your jars have been washed just before use and begin to stuff the prepared sauerkraut into your jars allowing enough headroom so that you can um, allow for expansion as the canning process takes place. Also, take a wooden spoon and just tap down the sauerkraut to alleviate any of the air pockets. This is the canner. If you have smaller jars, you can have a wire basket that will fit inside so that it is easier to lift out. But if you do have a variety of sizes of jars, then the wire basket is not necessary and uh, just have the tongs then to pull out the jars once they have been processed. And it is important that the water level goes to about the neck of the jar and have a slow boil. A really hard full boil can cause the glass to break. So just have it on a slower boil. Here are two different size lids. You will have the regular or standard size jar or what is called a wide mouth. So take a look at your jars and determine which size opening you have. Also sterilize your lids so that they will seal properly once you put them on top of your jar. And again, just have a slow boil, not too harsh or else the rubber will disintegrate and won't create a proper seal. Once the lid has been put on, tighten the screw top but not extremely tight. After the processing has been completed, then you can give your um, screw top a final turn to make sure that it is on tight. And take some tongs to place the hot lids on your jar. And make sure that the rim of the jar is perfectly clean to ensure a proper and tight seal. As you can see, one liter jars in a size canner, four of them will fit. Do not try to crowd any more in, otherwise there is a risk of having the jars burst. And as you can see, the um, temperature of the stove is on a medium high. You really don't want to go any higher than that. After processing your sauerkraut for 20 minutes, remove the jars carefully with the tongs. And do take care when pulling them, the jars out as they could slip out of the tong and uh, fly back into the hot water and there could be a risk of burn. So do take caution and care when removing the hot jars out of the canner. Place the jars on a towel so that they can have a chance to cool. And listen to the pop of the lid and that will let you know that the seal has um, been securely sealed. Also, don't put these hot jars on an arborite countertop as it will leave rings. As you can see, I've put it on a tile 
counter and that is um, so that no damage occurs from the hard, hot jars. Line them up allowing some space between the jars so that the air can circulate through and they can cool properly. Allow about 24 hours for your jars to cool and then you can store them in a cool dry place and this will last indefinitely as long as the seal is proper. Um, up to two years everything is perfectly fine. If you find that one of your jars has not sealed, just put it in the fridge and eat it within a week. And that is the process of how to can and process your own sauerkraut.